looky here, ladies and gents. We're fixing to do some race car stuff today. Oh my God. So I believe this is going to be episode two of building a street strip third gen Camaro race car. Uh, so yeah, let me show you what we're working on today. So you may agree or disagree, but I think every race car needs an eight point roll cage. Just got that in the mail the other day, along with the roll cage. If you are a third gen Camaro person, then certainly you have heard of subframe connectors. So I have a partial kit here of spawn performance subframe connectors. It is a well done unit. They go right down the rail. They're super sweet. Um, there is another piece to it that I'm currently using over there. Um, the only issue that we're dealing with here is that that's a lot of steel. And we want our race car to go on a diet. And right now we're looking at adding 110 pounds worth of steel. So we're adding some weight here and we need to take off some weight in other places. And we're going to start with this bad boy right here. This is Spawn Performance Tubular K-Member. Of the two color options, I went with the powder coated red. You can also get it in black. And there's a series of options that Spawn offers when you order these because they are made to order. Now, I ordered mine and they told me two to three weeks before they ship because they are built um, as you order them, obviously. And I managed to get mine in just a little over two weeks, which I was thrilled about. So, some of the options I went with is right now I am retaining the stock style coil spring suspension. Uh, you can get different engine mounts for it. I opted to go with the small block Chevy, big block Chevy, and I think it even accommodates the V6. It basically, you could take your stock engine that comes in these cars, your 5 liter or 5.7, and they will bolt right up to these pads here. Now, I did the 5.3 LS swap and I'm already adapted to fit stock style motor mounts so I went with these because this retains my ability in the future to go back to one of those engines if I ever wanted to. Uh, I did not do the tubular A-arms that come with these because again as of right now I'm sticking with the stock style suspension and the A-arms that retain your stock style coil suspension are different than coilovers so I'm going to run the stock A-arms in the car for now, and then when we upgrade to coilover suspension, I will then get the upgraded tubular A-arms. But for right now, it's just this unit right here. If you look real close, the quality and the welds, the paint is phenomenal. Also, this thing weighs 32 pounds. Uh, I did weigh this whole unit. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work installing this because that's going to be in today's episode. Then we're going to weigh the K-member that's in the car now and compare how much weight we're saving. And then we're probably going to move on to other things and figure out where else we can shave weight in this car. So, All right, so here we are working on the car. You see I got it propped up here, so the front end's completely suspended. And then I got the engine propped up off the motor mounts. And then I've got some support under here, kind of on the transmission. As well as a little rod going across with a strap that's kind of holding the engine up. So, uh, for starters, I took off the tie rod end here because this A-arm and like all of this structure right here. So this, this, and then that you see under there, that's all got to come out. So as far as I can tell, I'm going to go for the ball joint right underneath here. And then the sway bar link. Take that loose, take that loose. And then we're going to see what that gains us. As far as I can tell, there's going to be a lot of spring pressure on this A-arm right here. So when this ball joint comes loose, this thing might go ka and like shoot down. But, you know, we'll see what happens. You know, guys, I really got to tell you how good it feels just to come out here in the garage and wrench on the car, you know, and, and get a little grease on my hands. You know, I just love it. Just kidding. I do it every day for work. But this is my car, so it is a little more... Uh, satisfying to work on it but anyways yeah okay so uh, my first tip of the day when you got your ball joint loose here and you got your spring in there still you know a little trick is you can just tap on this knuckle right here and that's a good way to get your joints to come loose it works for your tie rod ends too 
But I would highly recommend <laughs> uh, putting a little support underneath that A-arm. Like maybe have a jack for support because when that sucker comes loose, this spring comes out of there real quick. I think there's there's pieces that ended up over there. So, uh, yeah, maybe don't do that. Okay, I'm at the driver's side now. And I'm ready to loosen that ball joint. And you can see what I did is I left the nut on this time. Which really isn't uh, any more safe. But I'm not going to take that off until I'm ready for that to come loose. Or until you can get support underneath of it. Because if that thing were to come loose on its own, it would be a really big bang. But I'm going to show you what happens. Uh, when you do it my way. So what I'm going to do is just take my hammer and I'm going to smack the knuckle right there. And usually that's enough shock that it'll get that taper to come loose. Air hammers work really good too, but I should be able to get it loose. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Alright, I'm standing back because I'm kind of scared. Go ahead and take that nut off. Alright, she's live. Firing off a cannon. Oh, this is scary. Okay, for reals, that was for demonstration purposes only. I would highly recommend doing something different because that sucker comes out of there like free willy. Holy smokes. All right, so that was pretty simple. We got our lower ball joints loose, tie rod ends, or yeah, tie rod ends, and then our uh, sway bar links off. So the subframe is actually completely detached from everything because our engine was already pulled. But the last thing that's waiting for is these brake lines because they go underneath this current K member. I'm going to try and take it loose right here and then on the other side you can kind of see you'll have to disconnect all your brake lines and then they're going to have to come down with it which is fine because I'll reinstall them on the new K member and I would highly recommend not trying to bend these out of the way because there's a good chance you're going to kink them. These probably are, I'm almost certain these are the original brake lines but they're still in good shape but they're not going to bend. They'll kink. I almost guarantee it. So I'm going to go up top and disconnect them. See if I can get them disconnected on both sides here. And then uh, we should be ready to lower this thing down. Alright, so I got the brake line that bridges across completely removed. I got it out in one piece without having to bend it. And it looks like I've just got one. That looks like two. And I think there's a third bolt in the back that's got to come out. And also my triangular braces up here. Took those loose off the K-member and slid them forward, just pivoting off this upper bolt here. But I think we're ready to loosen them big bolts, and this thing should drop down out of there with the A-arm still intact. So, see what happens here. Alright, there we have it. We got the old K-member out. Here's the new spawn K-member. Loosen the bolts, drop her down, and slid it right out the side right here. So now, next step, i got to swap over the A-arms. And then uh, swap over the factory small block Chevy uh, engine mounts. And then as you can see, what's really nice about the spawn unit, it comes with tabs on here. All throughout for remounting your brake lines. This one here, here. So we'll get the, everything swapped over and this thing will be ready to go back in. And actually I'm going to leave the A-arms off because it's easy. Gravity helps you get things down, not necessarily to lift them back up. So, I'll install the A-arms once it's under the car, but motor mounts and everything else, we're going to get swapped over, and then uh, we'll be ready to go back together. Alright guys, so last night, it ended up being like, you know, I live in Iowa, and it got up to like 40 degrees yesterday, so naturally, I had to quit working on the car so I could get out the grill and grill up some burgers last night. So, I came out a little bit later last night, didn't do any filming, but I did button up a few things. One of the other things I did was I put a post on social media about this Spawn K member and it actually like blew up. A lot of guys saying they were having issues and this and that and the other thing. And one of the issues they were talking about was tie rod clearance. And it just so happens that I as well ran into this issue. However, it is an extremely simple fix. Let me show you. Here's a little shot of the Somewhat finished product. I gotta, like, as soon as I get the weight back down on the car, I'll tighten the A-arm bolts, but 
the issue that people are talking about, if you look real closely, right, oh, there's my finger, uh, right there, and right there, you can see that that tube is notched and supported for clearance for your front tie rods and center link. And the issue guys are having is their tie rods don't quite have enough clearance to clear that on either side. So here I have my center link tie rods and idler arm pulled out of the car. This isn't totally necessary, but this is how it would be sitting from in the car, like the front's this way, back of the car's that way. The issue is having clearance for these little ends to clear in those notches under there. Now, it was a super, super simple fix. So this idler arm right here, this is where it mounts to the car. And if we go over here, you can see it mounts right here. And you can see these holes are slotted. All you gots to do, loosen these bolts up and slide that sucker all the way up. And when you do that, it raises it up and moves it forward. Bam, you got plenty of clearance. Another thing worth mentioning, if you look real closely, I swapped these side to side already, but if you look at this one compared to that one, this one's way thicker, like that way, versus this one. Also, this one has a grease circ on the end, and this one, it sticks out the front that way. I ended up swapping these side to side because I had all sorts of clearance on the driver's side, and I was getting really close on the passenger side. Now, you might be asking, why is this pulled out of the car? Unrelated reasons. What ended up happening, because of my LS swap, the 5.3 that's in the car, and the oil pan that I'm using, I had very little clearance right here on my center link. So, when I slid this up, that got dangerously close to my oil pan. Now, I can't pin that on spawn because I'm using their K-member with stock small block Chevy mounts, dirty dingo engine mounts on an engine that was never intended to be in this car with an aftermarket cast oil pan. So naturally, with builds like these, these things are going to happen. It's Alright guys, it's the following weekend. It was last weekend that I put the K-member in the car and I was talking about the clearancing issues between the oil pan. So it turns out um, all of the issues I was having with fitment with the tie rods and the K-member were because of my oil pan. Uh, when I originally did the swap in the car, I got an aftermarket pan for it and it turns out I got the wrong one. The one fit as far as the original K-member went but, and it had nothing to do with the tubular K-member, but what ended up happening, the pan that I got is too thick in the front, so there's not enough clearance for uh, the tie rods, the center link, to clear through there. So what ended up happening, to make the center link, or originally, to make the center link clear the oil pan, I had to slide it all the way down. And when you slide it down, you also slide it back. When I did that, that's why I ended up with clearance issues on the K-member. So what I ended up doing, and I'm going to open it up here real quick, was I found the correct oil pan that I needed anyway for this car. Um, I was going to try and raise the engine up and shim the engine mounts and do this and do that and thought, you know what, I'm way too deep into this car to be doing stuff like that. So I'm just going to get the correct part that fits and everything will be perfect. So let me show you the new part and uh, we'll go from there. This is a retrofit oil pan. I actually got it off of Amazon, but it was sold and shipped by uh, Super Shops. There's the part number on there. And that's just blocking my address. But, check this guy out. I was actually really excited about this anyways. Because I ended up going with... Open this thing up. This is an F-body style retrofit oil pan. And I got it in black. Now, I'll show you the difference right here. You can see, and anyone doing a swap in the car, even if you're not doing a K-member swap, this is the oil pan that's needed for this car and a lot of other ones. I think the G-bodies require this too. But you can see how thin this is, and then it tears up, and then this whole deal is actually bigger. So this kit is super nice because it comes with 
the baffling, the pickup tube, uh, the snout for this, for your oil filter, and I believe it's a 57060. It's an oil filter that would fit like a 2010 Corvette. And then, uh, so that part number will get you the black one. Uh, they also sell one that's just bare aluminum and it's 20 bucks cheaper, but given the color combo of my car, I decided to go with the black one. That's 20 bucks, and I thought, yeah, let's do it. Also, it comes with a new gasket. So I'm going to go ahead and get this guy installed. And then I can go back underneath here and get my final brake line back on. And then I'll need to do some toe adjustments on it. And I should have all the clearance in the world. And we'll be good to go. Just for a quick comparison here, this is the aftermarket oil pan that I originally bought to replace the 5.3 uh, truck oil pan. This worked. And I had it on the car, and it was a good product and everything, but the issue I ran into is this thickness right here. And here's the new one. This is a six-quart pan. I think this was five and a half. Maybe it was, maybe it was even five. I don't remember. Uh, but you can see the difference in this thickness right here. And that's what I need is this extra clearance for that center link on the steering, which is why I'm switching to this oil pan. This is still a good pan. Also, you can see the difference in the oil pickup tubes. The height here versus here because this one's going to be tucked up a lot higher for clearance it has that little bend in it but otherwise they pretty much sit in the same spot so either way uh, i'm going to hang on to this one because i do have another motor that's coming here soon that could be beneficial too but if it goes in this car obviously we'll have to run this high tuck pan versus this one so that's that all right so i got the new Black oil pan on there, the F body oil pan that has the three stages in it that I just showed you. Got it installed on the car, um, and that took care of all my issues. Once I got that on there, I was able to adjust that center link all the way up, and I've got all the clearance in the world for that front steering assembly. So, this project, K member wise, is actually done. Um, brake lines are all hooked up. I do need to get the car back on the wheels, and then I'm going to tighten the bolts um, at the A arms. I want to get the weight on them where they're going to be sitting before I tighten those up and then this portion of the project will be done. So so this is going to be it for this episode. Coming up soon will be the subframe connectors, maybe the roll cage, we'll see. Time's running out. The uh, track's about ready to open up here soon, next couple weeks or a month away or so. So anyways guys, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. Dadgummit, stay good. We'll see you later.